It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another top 10 video. The first top 10 where I am going to do a mod. This is the Millennium Dawn mod in Hearts of Iron 4. And we're going to go through the top 10 most powerful nations in the modern day mod. In the year 2000. Here we go. So first of all, what is the criteria for this? So, this is the category of most powerful, and the three, f the three or four factors that are going to take into account how powerful a nation is, is overall army size, based on overall amount of divisions. The second factor is overall factory size, such as military factories, as well as civilian factories. And the third, which is a, of a kind of a lesser role, is the overall economy as well, such as amount of resources in the country. And I guess a fourth one, also a minor note, is the population as well for overall manpower. Because this is a modern day mod, uh, such as the factors of manpower aren't as crucially important don't get me wrong it makes a part if you're going to fight long engaged conflicts but those don't tend to happen in a modern day scenario uh, but if you are playing hearts of iron 4 i guess it is a factor that can contribute to how powerful that nation could be but it's not one of the main factors as i said to you the overall army size is one of the big cruxes crutches crutches crispers that's the one we're going to go observe and at first number 10 is south Africa. So you are the leading economic power in South Africa, in Africa overall, for the whole continent, all of it. You start with 10 divisions, 4 military factories, and 11 civilian factories. 4 military factories for a starting nation is actually pretty damn strong, and 10 uh, overall divisions is also very strong. You have got some really easy targets to take out first. You have got uh, Lesotho and Swaziland. And then also you've got Zimbabwe, Botswana, Nambia, Zim, uh, Mozambique. And you can push further north and take out some of these weaker nations which have very, very, very small army sizes. I don't even think they've even got... Oh yeah, they have got one division. Swaziland has one mechanized division. And Lesotho has one division that we don't know. Hmm. Overall, the economy is quite strong. You have got a lot of resources. Lots of chromium that you probably not need, maybe. I'm not sure. Actually, now I think about it, I'm not actually sure how much of a role does chromium play in the Millennium Door mod. I'm not even sure. I still don't think it plays a major role. Remember, guys, if you do enjoy this video, remember to like it. And don't forget to subscribe. And drop us a comment below of what your top 10 nations are to play. And most powerful nations are in the Millennium Dawn mod. That is number 10. At number 9, it is Columbia. Colombia starts the game with an exceptionally large army size in comparison to their overall nation strength with 42 divisions. I could be wrong about this, but I think it is the largest army size at the start of the game. Let me double check. It is. Oh, wait, no. I guess Brazil just slightly ahead. But Brazil is a stronger nation overall. Um, it's up to you. I don't know. For me, I didn't want to go with Brazil. Uh, because it has been selected quite often in a lot of the games. I think Colombia wouldn't be an extra interesting twi twist. Because you have got a smaller nation as well, you have got overall better infrastructure. Other than in Brazil, where you're going to be fighting in the West, which has a lot of crappy infrastructure, and you're not going to be fighting as many mountains as well. Uh, you have got options of which nations to pick into as well. Venezuela, which has got some really good resources. Um, Ecuador and Peru. Options to expand all around you. Oh, as well, really, 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 really weak. Panama as well. Have they got any resources? No, but they have got an option to expand and steal a few factories from them. Nice. When it comes down to it, it's got two military factories and ten civilian factories. So you are relatively weak. One of the strongest things in... One of the most fun things in Hearts of Iron 4 is to start as a relatively weak, small to medium-sized nation and expand and get more and more stronger. And it feels really good to have that momentum of going from a... A minor to a colossal superpower. I think Colombia is a really good example of that. Whereas Brazil, you do kind of start with a lot more factories. So you are already kind of already a superpower anyway. So I guess it takes away some of the fun of that. But Colombia definitely is a strong nation based in a good position in South America. Did I say Africa? I meant America. America. South America. This is America. South America. At number eight, it is Ukraine. Ukraine gets the luxury of starting with 30 divisions, which is massive. You've got five military factories and 10 civilian factories. 
a very good army size overall. In proportion, they've got a lot of military factories in comparison to civilian factories. So that gets you a nice war economy. It gets the ability to uh, stomp out some weak rivals around you. You've got the options to push into Moldova, for instance, as well as Trans Transistria? Transistria? Am I saying that right, maybe? Or maybe you want to pick on Big Daddy Russia, maybe. Hmm. That would be pretty spooky. You also not do too bad with resources as well. A lot of steel, bits of oil as well. Yeah, so you have got lots of options to build up your initial economy. And also the manpower isn't too bad either. You are on volunteer, limited conscription. Oh no, you're on limited conscription to begin with, with half a million manpower. And with a large nation as well, you've got lots of opportunities to expand into different areas. I always say expand. I'm not sure if I'm making myself very clear, but you got extra states to push into and expand into, for instance. And Ukraine has got a lot of states based on its overall large size. At number seven is Egypt. Another African nation. The reason I went for Egypt is that it does start off with another very, very large army size. 49 divisions, 5 military factories, 18 civilian factories. You do start out at limited conscription and you've got a lot of manpower to play with. Being an African nation, you are surrounded by other nations that are relatively weaker than you, so you can stomp them out and wipe them out pretty quick. Sudan's a good option to go for. Eritrea, Ethiopia, probably good options as well. Ooh, what do you know? Ethiopia and Eritrea are at war at the start of the game. What do you know? What do you know? I never even knew that. Defensive military strategy. Hmm. Not winning many wars with that strategy, are you boys? No, it's a it's cool option too, and you've also got options to expand into Israel as well if you want to feel very, very brave. But you are going to have to bully and take on the United States, which are allied in NATO. So you're going to have to deal with all of these as well. It's going to be quite fun. Uh, but if you do get into Jordan, you're going to be expanding into Saudi Arabia. Have a lot of options for oil and whatnot, so that's going to make you relatively strong for Saudi Arabia. Well, Egypt, but Egypt... I don't know. What you could actually do, now think about it, is you could try and make an Arab Union, maybe, with Egypt. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah? Yeah. At number six, it is Turkey. Turkey seems to get into my top ten list quite a lot. It has all the issues I've previously mentioned in Holy 4. It has a lot of areas to expand. It has a decent manpower. In huts in, model, in Millennium Dawn, it does have a lot of divisions too. Ooh, it has Kurdish separatism. I wasn't even aware of that. I imagine getting rid of that would help you out. Is it in their focus sheet to get rid of it? Doesn't look like they are, so you're going to have to deal with that, which is a bit of a problem. But overall, you do start with a decent size economy, a very, very large army size, lots of military factories, options to expand into Iraq, Syria, as well as the, uh, the these nations. I always say this wrong. Caucasus Nate regions. I said it wrong, didn't I? I said it wrong again. But no, you get the options to expand, and if you do feel bored, you can maybe try and form the Ottoman Empire again, take out Greece. And uh, maybe push further south into the Levant too. Always an option for you. At number five is India. India ha starts with 77 divisions, 22 military factories, and 97 civilian factories. Remember, this is the year 2000. And I can't quite understand why you start so strong as India. But yeah, you're hell strong. You've got a lot of manpower to play with. In, in all honesty, India is really OP. Um, you have got a few issues around you because some of your rivals are quite strong. China is huge. Uh, Myanmar is pretty strong too. Pakistan is also pretty strong. So no matter where you go, you are going to be facing quite a strong rival. And also Sri Lanka, even though it's just an island nation with a one state, has got up to 15 divisions. So... You to be aware that wherever you're going to be going with India, it's going to be difficult to expand. But let's just say, if you play as India from the start of the game, you are going to be strong from the get-go. So, there's an option for you. At number four, it is a triple. It is France, UK. That's not the UK. And Germany. So, I've chosen to include these all as one because military-wise and economically, they're very similar. Germany has a slight edge with its overall military size, but has a slightly smaller army size compared to France and the UK. And France and the UK almost have identical size armies and also identical size economies as well. So, I decided to bundle all three of these into one because they're not vastly different anyway. 
Resources wise, I think Germany has a slight edge with a bit of variety of rubber and oil. A um, little more steel for France. And I don't know, there's, there's not actually that much different for the UK as well. The France does have access. Oh, there's not aluminium in here anymore. Okay, so that's not an option anymore. Uh, but you have access to overseas territories with the UK and France, which you don't have with Germany. Are overseas territories even going to help you? I don't even know. But the UK and France does start with a larger army size than in comparison to Germany, which is significantly smaller. Also, Germany is going to have to deal with some of their bad national spirits they can get through rid of through their focus. But with their larger economy, well, a slightly larger economy compared to France and the UK, it'll be relatively easy to break out of that. Didn't want to include too many of the same nations in this list, as you probably gathered. And with the UK, France and Germany all being relatively identical, I didn't want to include them as separate. So I decided to bundle them all as number four. At number three... It is Russia, with Putin as their figurehead. Total amount of 63 divisions, 13 military factories and 44 civilian factories. And a huge navy. Uh, overall, volunteer only. But you have 48,000 manpower. So the manpower is pretty mediocre in comparison to the overall size. But one of the greatest things about Russia, other than the things I've already told you, which are pretty sweet as well, is also the access to just tons of resources. Yeah, so I think the only thing they don't have a great deal about is chromium, which isn't a resource you use that much of anyway. And also you don't have a lot of rubber, I believe, which you could always just make some synthetics as well. And as you'd imagine, because you're Russia, you have options to expand into all the previous Soviet era, Russian Empire areas. You can access the Baltic, Eastern Europe, access the steppes of Asia. It's up to you what you want to do, really. Russia is considerably strong, has lots of flexibility, but overall, it isn't the best of the best. It has a few issues, such as its national spirit, such as the oligarchy, which you can't get rid of through the national focus. And as I said, there's some resource issues, and also you have a... For the size of the nation, you don't really have a very, very... Well, I, I'll tell you one thing that's a benefit. It has got a lot of tank divisions in overall amount of divisions that it has. Um, but yeah, for the overall size of the nation, you don't have a great number of divisions. For instance, Ukraine, as I just mentioned before, has 40, but you've got 63, but you're like five or six, seven times larger than Ukraine, you know? So, it's strong, uh, but there's a lot of other things going for it other than raw military strength, if you get what I mean. At number two is the United States of America. The United States has a little bit of trouble with political power at the start for its, some of its national focuses, which I believe can be made easier through their national focus. I'm not sure, though. I haven't played around with it. But there is options to dismantle Congress, and for instance, and go for more of a totalitarian state, which will give you access to more political power, which is up to you. I would imagine the options for national focus for the USA is only going to make it stronger and stronger and stronger, such as expanding NATO and... Uh, yeah, and obviously expanding the industry that it already has. The overall size of its forces, 81 divisions, 42 military factories, which is insane, and 195 civilian factories. And the population is, for the most part, very large as well, even larger than Russia. Insane Navy, insane Air Force. Uh, Resource-wise, also pretty insane. Did I say insane? I meant insane. Really insane. One thing you're going to need a little bit of is a little bit more chromium and a little bit more rubber, but overall still an absolutely massive amount of resources. I guess you could expand into Mexico. Mexico is quite strong, but then again, you're very strong, so you should be okay. Uh, but no, overall USA is, as you probably would imagine, as the last remaining superpower is damn strong. You've got a lot of military bases around the world as well. So if you do want to expand into other areas other than the Americas, you've got the option to do that. And the fact that you're part of NATO as well really makes you really scary too. No one's going to pick on big, big, big daddy USA, are they? Are they? Maybe? At number one. But first. <laughs> but first. We're going to talk about some honorable mentions. We have North Korea. Which is an honorable mention at 55 divisions. Overall army size is massive. Industry is pathetic though. Uh, so you're just re relying on massive amounts of raw army size. Which overall isn't really going to help you that much. You've also got Vietnam as well. Which also has a very, very large... Oop, let me go into that right. 31 divisions. Which for the size of the nation and the amount of industry you have. And the amount of resources you have. 
Oh, actually, the results are not too bad. A lot of tungsten. But overall, um, for the size of the nation and its location, it has got a lot of divisions. So you've got uh, options to be quite strong in Lindu China. Maybe unify Lindu China, maybe. Hmm, maybe. Maybe. Also, another honorable mention is Saudi Arabia, too. The army size and the manpower aren't that great, but just look at the resources. Oh, my God. Look at that. So much oil. Yeah, it is really pretty. So, if a lot of oil does get used around the world, which it probably will be if a lot of wars kick off, you are going to be one of the number one export import partners when it comes down to getting rid of that oil and making your economy jumpstart, which is going to help you uh, build your economy up bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. At number one, have you already guessed it? Is China. Don't ask me why, but for some reason China has a bigger economy at the start of the game in 2000 than USA. And we all know that's not true. China didn't catch up until the last decade. So I don't quite get it. Maybe these numbers will be changed at some point. I'm not sure. They do have less military factories than USA, but they have more civilian factories. They also have a lot of divisions, but I believe those divisions aren't proper strong. Maybe look, 80 motorized, 22 artillery, 19 anti-air, 17 moderns. So overall, it looks like they've got a lot of divisions, but not a lot of them aren't very good. So we have a lot of these, like for instance, there's 100 divisions there that are just kind of infantry based, over 120, 130, and only 17 armor. So I would imagine they're not that strong, but the overall number of them makes your life easy. Yet again, I'm not going to put a large emphasis on manpower, but let's be honest with you. You're China. You've got, for the most part, unlimited manpower. And I'm surprised there's not a national spirit that nerfs your manpower somehow. Maybe with the max, the ma large amounts of minorities in the east or west or whatever. 4.73 million manpower, and that is only on volunteer only. Free trade. Hmm. Not very communist, is it? globalized communism wait is that a thing i don't know anyway yeah and you've also got for the most part unlimited resources i don't quite understand why they've got so much rubber the tungsten is insane as well i think the only issue they've got is chromium oh there's a little bit in tibet there that's it but overall, China not only is strong at the start of the game, but has the ability to expand into everywhere around them just because they're overwhelmingly strong to begin with. And uh, they don't really have a lot of national focuses that can hold them back too. Is this a custom focus tree? No, it is. It is. Okay, I never played with this. That might be quite fun. Chinese democracy, maybe? Mm, maybe. Uh? If you've enjoyed this video, guys, remember to like and to subscribe. Drop us a comment below what your top 10 list of most powerful nations in Millennium Dawn mod. And I hope you all have an absolutely awesome day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.